by 811. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tony Cardasco along with Marcus Banks. And Marcus, in the opener, we have UNLV versus Rice. We are just three miles from the UNLV campus, so we're expecting a partisan crowd. The Running Rebels are up and they're running again. They're averaging 99 points per game. They're actually very entertaining. Four players in double figures. What have been some of the keys to the early season success? Well, I think it's the trust of the, the, uh, the senior, uh, George Johnson, uh, which is the point guard. He pushes the tempo, controls the floor. Uh, he's an extension off of Coach Menzies. So he does everything he needs to do. I've been watching this kid. He's been working hard all summer long. And guess what? In result, it's really, really paying off. These guys are 3-0 and start the season. And they're doing a great job of running the floor. Now, down in Houston, Mike Rhodes departs. He goes back to VCU where he was an assistant. So his assistant, Scott Perra, moves up the chain. He's the head coach now. Six players depart. They transfer. Not a lot of depth but we're going to focus on Connor Cashaw. He's had the hot hand in the early part of the season. Well, you know what? He's a, he's a junior that can put the ball in the basket. Uh, I think he's very athletic. Uh, he's a slasher. Um, I think the guys around him needs to do a better job of, of filling in. Um, you know, it's a lot of pressure on him. I think he's averaging somewhere around 17 points a game. Uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, I just want the team uh, to fill in and help out with their roles. The tempo tonight, will Rice try to take UNLV out of its run and gun game? Absolutely. Um, I think with a nine-man rotation and the way that these guys are playing and shooting the ball as of right now and the big fella, every time he touch it, you know what, I think they're going to have to play zone. Uh, I think they're going to have to play at least a uh, one, two, two or something like that uh, to slow the tempo down and, and, you know, keep these guys from running. The first of two games happening here at the T-Mobile Arena tonight. Coming up later on, it'll be Utah against Ole Miss. It's the MGM Resorts main event. Stay tuned. There's life, and then there's Summerlin Life, a premium master plan community lifestyle only found in Las Vegas with Red Rock Canyon for a backyard and downtown Summerlin's fashion, dining, and entertainment at your doorstep. This award-winning amenity-rich lifestyle has to be lived to be believed. And with dozens of actively selling neighborhoods, there's never been a better time to start living the Summerlin life. Backcourt for the Rice Owls, Aiko Adams and Connor Cashaw, the front line of Robert Martin, Bishop Mency, and Austin Meyer for the running rebels of UNLV, Jordan Johnson and Jovan Jojo Mooring in the backcourt. As you take a look at Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and there he'll he be is. with us at halftime, That's or the before man. halftime, he'll be here in the first half. That's Chris right. Clyburn, Shakur Justin, and Brandon McCoy. The seven-footer. Man, back in Kareem's day, there weren't very many seven-footers, and now it's a necessity <laughs> to have a seven-footer on every team. I mean, you know what? Now it's, it's the way the game has evolved. All the seven-footers are shooting three-pointers now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could you imagine? So back then, I mean, you had the sky hook. It's, so. it's positionless basketball more and more, right? Absolutely. I mean, you got the, the, the seven-footers playing point guard. You got the little guys in there rebounding the ball. Look at Russell Westbrook. Averaging 10, 11 rebounds a game. Back in my day, I tell you what, that's when that, that's what the big men were for. You know what I mean? Like I, I tell you a story. Uh, you go, I playing with Ben Baker, and uh, it was a rebounding situation. He said, "Young fella, you stay out there, and let me do my job in here." Well, with you and LV and its uh, rebounding approach this season, they were after a couple of games. They were first in the nation with 22 rebounds on the offensive end per game. 
you know, just throw it up there. Ready to jump center, Austin Meyer and Brandon McCoy back tip. And we're underway from the T-Mobile Arena here in Vegas. A three-point jumper outside by Martin off the mark. This and the is Roman Rebels want to run. This is what we're talking about. Control the boards on the defense end, get out on the offense end. And, and there's the zone for the Rice Owls. I knew they were going to do it. Um, you know what? That's the 1-2-2. Two, two. They're going to slow the game down. They have to play at this pace, of course, especially with nine guys in rotation. Clyburn feeling it off of a career best 19 points, but not feeling the three-pointer cleaned up and nice. in McCoy. That's what you got to do. You know what? If you slow the ball down, you know what? You run your zone offenses. You get the ball to the middle of the floor. You play keep away with your big man. So Brandon McCoy going to work. What a great move. Right up and over with the left hand. Great put back for the big man. Way to put UNLV on the board. And what we've seen out of Brandon McCoy in the early part of this season is that he can get the shot off with either hand. You know what? He's been working on it. Uh, coach is doing a good job, and I guess they're focusing on, you know, him being able to, you know, put the ball back in, you know, a little quicker and keep the ball up. Free throws are an integral part of the game, and UNLV missed 19 free throws against Prairie View A&M. Well, you know what? All it is is confidence. You know, you just get up there. You know, these guys have been playing basketball all their life. Just shoot the ball. It's got to be a mismatch somewhere as McCoy went outside. Shot clock is down to five. Here's Cashoff. Step back three, and that's long. Offensive glass, Austin Meyer, and a reset for the Rice Owls. See that? Hopefully, that's that won't be a heel on on the uh, the Rebels uh, tonight. They gotta they gotta put bodies on these guys. You know, this is they gotta burn this team out early. The uh, pick and pop for Cashaw falls down. Wanted the foul as him and Clyburn for UNLV collided. Nice morning to the basket. Morning, and morning with the kick out for nice. three. That's Clyburn. Perfect. What a great shot by Clyburn. It's always good to see him get going early. Mooring is averaging 16 points per game for the combo guard. He was forced to play the point a lot last year. And now UNLV has a natural point guard in Jordan Johnson. Well, the lefty more, Adams. For Mori, it, it gives him a chance to, to get back to his natural position at playing a two guard. Clyburn was 0 for 4 in the, in the exhibition game and then as Mooring lets it fly. Nice. Offensive glass, that's Shakur Justin over the bat. Well, you know what? No matter what, I, st I still like that these guys are attacking the glass, especially on the offense end. That's a good sign for these guys. You know what? We just got to do it the right way. Nothing illegal. Yeah, back to Chris Clyburn. 0 for 4 in the opening game as well. And then he busts out of it and uh, has a career best against Eastern Washington. The head coach, Marvin Menzies former assistant at UNLV under Lon Kruger. And there's a bucket for two. That's a nice little free throw line jump shot. And that's what Cashaw does best at 27 against Northwestern State, a career high. You know what, this kid, Cashaw, he's, he's really poised. Uh, he plays the game really, really well. Great steal by Jordan. What a pass to Claiborne. And Claiborne draws the foul as he slices into the lane, and he is a slasher, and Aiko Adams will be charged with the personal foul. That's a great job defensively. These guys getting up pressure on the ball. They have to create the tempo the Rebels have to. Well, the way that Clyburn is, is slashing of late reminds you a little bit of what Stacy Augman used to do on a regular basis. Absolutely, one of the best at it. You know what, the rubber band man. Get in there, slash in and out of the basket. The head coach of the Rice Owls is Scott Perra, as you heard about in the open and he coached James Harden at Artesia High School and then Harden went to ASU where Para was an assistant coach and and then Para wound up at uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and then Rice and yesterday at the shoot around Para was expressing to his team that he wants to get into a free throw shooting contest against UNLV because he feels as though UNLV could not compete so if they keep those numbers low, and Rice has been hitting at an 80% clip, could determine the outcome of the game. Well, I don't know if they want to get in a free throw shooting contest, because let's not forget the Rebels are still at home. Um, so momentum does count and it does matter. Adams, great rebound. Yeah, Adams took that shot from the hip. Nice, great Wide pass open look for Maury. Three. Nice. I love, the, I love the poise of the point guard, Johnson. Uh, push the tempo, you know what? Press the defense and find shooters on the outside. Great shot by Moore. 
Second assist on the night for Johnson. Great ball pressure. No hands. Cash off. And he's just walking in and finding his spot in his range. And more he needs to contest. You know what? I, he, he's getting to a spot. Uh, he's beating him to the spot. And you know what? I just think uh, Maureen just had to be a little bit aggressive. On defense. Swish for Clyburn from three. I love to see Clyburn get off to a good start because he had a rough beginning. It's always good to see shooters get the ball going into the basket. Seven points already for Chris Clyburn. Where did that come from? Off the rim. Another fast break for the Rebels. See what they get out of it. What a pass. Nice pump fake. Step back to three up. off the pump. Nice and set it up. Justin just wants rebounds more than anyone else on the court. He said a lot of times you see where the opponent is just standing under the boards and like just watching the ball. Nobody goes after it. You know what? I, I think rebounding is all effort. And right now, UNLV has the guys that they're getting on the boards. And you know what? They're creating pressure for this team. And you know what? I think they should keep it going. On the strip, presented by good 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 nice. Yeah, it's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Nice and simple. No. Are we okay? You, you, you enjoying the game? You enjoying the game? All right. No cheering. No cheering. <laughs> Get all four games at one discounted price or each game by itself. Visit runningrebelsonthestrip.com and get your tickets now. Kareem to the crowd. Big fella. He's got a new book that came out today. He'll tell us more about that. That's a lot of history right there. A lot of basketball. I always wonder what it would be like to come up in that, that era and play against those guys. Man. <laughs> A dream. Oh, my God. You'd be asking for autographs every night. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Probably, right? I think your eyes would be more lit up <laughs> like the lights. So we've got A.J. LaPre who checks in for the Rice Owls. UNOV ups the pressure. A little full court pressure by Johnson. Got to force the tempo, UNOV. Also into the game is Tim Harrison. He's a good outside shooter for a big man at 6'8". The missed layup attempt, that was Bishop Mency over the back, and he's going to be charged with the personal foul. So Mency a little bit too aggressive inside. I think they got lucky because Cashaw definitely missed a little bunny there. Uh, a little left hand layup, I think he might have got a little bump. Uh, you know, we just got to do a better job of keeping him out of the middle of the floor. Uh, and create havoc, I guess. Cashaw with four points in the early part of this game. Eight point advantage for UNLV. See that zone pressure again. Great skip pass by Beck. The Rebels look well prepared for this 1-2-2 two, two in matchup zone. Anthony Johnson, a spark plug, is on the court for UNLV. And his pass down low, jostling for nice. position, McCoy! What a great move by McCoy. He kind of lost his balance a little bit, but guess what? He's been working. Nice little left hand jump up. So McCoy is two out of two from the field. Nice ball pressure up front by Johnson. Adams and outside. Guess who? Great contest. Harrison. Yeah. 
great contest. You can't do anything like about that. It's you better offense. Yeah, you got to go outside against the big man because he could shoot. Absolutely. Around the horn, the Rebels, and then again, the entry nice. pass inside, and Beck. That's it. That's the key. Beck. Oh, what a steal by Johnson. I told you, he's pushing the tempo. This kid, I love this kid. I love the point guard play that he brings to the UNLV Rebels. Pushes the ball, does well with the pass and on the bounce, and celebrates like after each Thank assist. You. The Rebels' defensive pressure picking up. LaPrey from distance for three. What a great shot by LaPrey. Took his time, held his follow through, and watched the ball go through. Could Rice continue to play at this pace? You know what? I would hope so, because I would like it to see a very interesting game. But right now, UNLV looks very, very sharp. Look at that. Great around the, the back, back pass. Side. And the finish by right. Beck again, Tervell Beck. What a play. Great pass. Ball's moving, ball's popping, they're getting easy shots. I mean, you can't ask for anything more if you coach Menzies. Right now, other than Mooring, there, there's four new newcomers on right. the court. Mm -hmm. And how can you pull that off? They had great team unity over the summer. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to start early. You know, of course, where a lot of those guys be home in the summertime, you got to get those guys together, play some basketball. It's definitely about building relationships and becoming friends. Now, the basket that UNLV is shooting at <laughs> had to be replaced because there were so many rim-rattling dunks during the pregame <laughs> that what, they tore it down. I tell you what, for you fans, you guys got to get here early to see the dunk contest that me and T just watched. <laughs> <laughs> they soared to such great heights anymore, huh? Oh, my huh? gosh. Naja Hunter should see his minutes increase. He's had a great practice. I was out watching them yesterday over at Mandalay Bay. The timer is down 2-8. There's Hunter. Doesn't see the shot clock. Rice just got to get better spacing. Harrison on a fadeaway. Defensive rebound for the Rebels. Amari Hardy now in. Johnson baseline nice. leaves it off. And the shot was swatted away from Anthony Smith. That's a great defensive play by Smith. <laughs> Way to get in the passing lanes also by, by Smith. He plays very hard, and the other night, uh, Coach Marvin Menzies, after the Prairie View A&N game, said, you know, one minute he's completing a spectacular dunk, but then he commits a foul on a player 30 feet outside. So you know he's what? just adjusting into the game. But you like the aggressiveness as LaPrey hits for his second basket on the night. Absolutely. Uh, I think he's doing a great job. You just always got to stay attacking. And, of course, as a head coach, you know you can always – you know, tell your dogs to release. And now you have Shekna Dembele in the sophomore and the three-pointer by Johnson. What a great it's shot. Good. He's playing very, very well in his first half. UNLV off to a 63% field goal percentage from the jump. You know what? Like I said, they're getting everything that they want. Um, you know, they're getting very, very good high uh, field goal percentage shots. So at the end of the day, like that's the end result. That's why they're up. Ball was knocked away by Smith. So for Anthony Smith comes in and gets two personal fouls. And that's what coach was talking about, playing too aggressive and outside the arc. You know what? Smith just got to understand, um, you know, being a defensive player, you know, you got to be smart. You got to know when to reach, when not to reach. And also, you know, you got to understand that it can hurt the team. Wild shot underneath by Naja Hunter. Rebels want to run. Clyburn to Johnson. Another pass. wide open look for three. That's off the mark and tapped around. And Justin was pushed in the back. You know what? That's unbelievable basketball. A little keep away, little man, a little give and go uh, by Johnson and uh, Clyburn. You know, it's been 47 years for the Rice Owls oh, wow. since an NC2A birth. Oh, wow. 47 years. Last year, won 23 games, made it into the quarterfinals of the CBI, and they expect it, they expect it to have a successful season. Did we see a three-second call? Absolutely. I mean, when do you see a three-second call they, anymore? Listen, get the ball down there to the big fellas. You, you guys in, get it in there. Do you guys in that three-on-three -three league and Ice Cube's <laughs> league, there's no three seconds, There's no, no way. This is, wrong. this is a man's game. <laughs> Cash all around the screen, and Harrison has a look at a three off the mark. Houston with the rebound for the running Rebels. 
Going to get it into the half court. All the way to the rim nice as pass. Johnson passes up a shot. And Clyburn is hacked. I love the aggressiveness. They are really, really staying aggressive right now. And it's showing. So we have a timeout on the court. And when we return, we'll have a special guest here at our broadcast site. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will join us live. Stay tuned. Las Vegas is now a hockey town. Don't miss college hockey at T-Mobile Arena when the puck drops for the Ice Vegas Invitational on January 5th and 6th. Boston College battles Michigan Tech, and Arizona State faces Northern Michigan in the opening round on Friday night. Tickets are on sale now at T-MobileArena.com. It's college hockey action at the Ice Vegas Invitational January 5th and 6th at T-Mobile Arena. Get your tickets now. Comprehensive, more than a name. Our approach to treating you. Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. I know it's old fashioned, but I don't have a cell phone. So when my landline cut out, we just felt so isolated. The power was down on the entire block. It was a Saturday, so the kids were home. Hey. I wouldn't say that I'm addicted, but when I lost my cable and internet, I was paralyzed. You have no idea what they put me through. And all because my neighbors didn't call 811. Did they, honey? For more information, visit www.call811.com. <laughs> oh, no. Not again. Arena and uh, the author, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, <laughs> joins us here. Your new book came out today. Tell us about it. Well, my book is about. Uh, my book is about mentoring. It's about uh, how I became who I am. And it really uh, is about uh, the mentors that I had, that I encountered, that helped me to understand what I wanted to do with my life. So it's for younger readers, and I hope that uh, parents out there will get their kids to, uh, to read it and get an idea of uh, what a mentor can do for their lives. Now you were diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia and it was eight years ago yes uh, how are things i'm doing fine right now uh, i'm very fortunate that medical science had uh, found a way to treat the type of leukemia that i have so uh, you know i i get a chance to live a, a, a lot longer and it's uh, it's very special to me uh, I, I didn't necessarily uh, know that that was going to happen you know when when you're first diagnosed you think that uh, you might only have months to live what is the mindset that you have when you're actually di diagnosed with uh, such a rare disease? Well, you know, uh, I didn't know what to think. I was very fortunate in that my uh, my middle son is a doctor. Okay. So he's the first person I called. You know, I, I got a call from the blood lab and said, you probably have leukemia. You better go see somebody. So I called my son and he said, what type of leukemia do you have? And I said, I don't know. He said, find out because it's possible to treat leukemia now. Many different types of leukemia are, are treatable. Right. And uh, you got to figure that out. And if you can treat it, treat it. Kareem. And, uh, that's why I'm still here. And we're glad you that's are. That's a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when you come to Vegas, do you always think about... I was there the night that you broke the NBA scoring mark with that sky hook over Marky. And I've, I have that impression, like, vividly in my head. Uh, do yeah. you still think about that a lot? I don't think about it a lot. You know, my, I've been retired now over 30 years. And you Has know it I, been that long? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's been 28 years. So it hasn't been that long, but just about 30 years. <laughs> so let me ask you something. You know, with me and T was sitting here earlier, we were talking about, you know, the importance of the sky hook and what we want these younger go uh, big men in today's game, you know, because they're shooting all the three pointers. Like, what would you give to those guys and what would you tell them? I would tell them that balance is, is, is very important. So if you've got guys that can score inside, that's going to make the defense sag. Then the guys on the outside shooting the threes and, and the mid-range shots, mm -hmm. they're going to have a lot less uh, duress on their shots, and more of those are going to drop. 
Right, better percentages. Better percentages for right. everybody. And right. better percentages for the team when they got somebody that can score inside and give them uh, inside scoring. Okay. And you don't have to rely totally on the outside shot. Uh, okay. Certain games, uh, when um, Golden State lost the uh, lost in those last three games. Right. Uh huh. They couldn't rebound. You know, yeah, right. they didn't have uh, they didn't have the balance out there that they okay. needed. Uh, but when they have it, you know how you know how terrible they are. They, Absolutely. They, they were and everybody else. So let me ask you another question: Is a center is what balances a basketball team? You know, all the way around, right? Right. Okay. Especially defensively. Right. Okay. Because okay. he's in the paint and he can see everything. Okay. No one else on the team can see everything except Absolutely. The, the guy in the paint. So if he's smart and talks to his guys, okay, and lets them know what's going on, you have a better defensive alignment all the time. You know what's changed about the game is that you know I thought that seven footers were a rarity when you were playing, right? There weren't very many that were playing the game. There was a decent amount, but every college team today has at least one seven footer. Right, right. And uh, they don't all learn the things that they need to know uh, if they're going to play in the paint. Right. Like I said, I, I think it's, it, it boils down to analytics. You know, uh, the big man's supposed to play closer to the basket and the guard's supposed to play further away. Brandon McCoy with that basket and one. We haven't had to talk very much because- Great assist, great assist. Great assist. Great assist. There's been no scoring here and there's the replay. Yeah, Brandon laid it off, laid it off real nice to uh, McCoy. Nice play. What do you think of uh, Brandon McCoy? This is the first time I've ever seen him play. Yeah. Earlier this year I met uh, somebody that really blew my mind. Uh, the young man that's playing for uh, Central Florida. Uh -huh. He's seven foot seven. Oh yeah. Oh wow. How does he move? He can move. He can run. He he he's just started playing basketball. Okay. Four or five years ago. So the coordination is not fully there. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, but he's oh my god. <laughs> I, I I stood next. I looked like a kid. I, I looked like I was in junior high school. I was I was explaining to TC <laughs> earlier. Like these kids are now. It's like they're growing them. They're more athletic. They're faster. They're, they jump higher. They shoot the ball better. Like it's definitely a different day in time. It's, it's a different day, and they and they are taking where we left off <laughs> yes. as their starting point. Yes. And they're, and they're adding on to it. Just imagine if you had to shoot three pointers back in your. Yeah, day. Marcus <laughs> said you you might be a point guard at the, in this game. Yes, in this game, could you imagine playing point guard? I actually made one. <laughs> I was really. One, I was one for thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the important message, uh, you know, when it, with cancer, uh, early diagnosis. I'm sure. Early diagnosis and. The support of the people who are doing the research because the researchers are finding ways to cure cure cancer or uh, keep it away so that people can 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 live longer. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a it's a wonderful thing that's happening. We're having a lot of breakthroughs and I, I hope everybody can get behind that and support these people. Absolutely. Please get behind the ring and support all of it. It's, it's for a great cause. Yeah. yeah. At halftime, you'll be doing a presentation, right? I just going to say a few words. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. No, no, nothing memorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You're one of the all-time greats to me, and everything that you say, I'm like a sponge, and everything's memorable. Oh, and I really, so really much. appreciate your time, and thank you for coming and supporting. Of course, this is my school at UNLV Rebels, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, when did Tarkanian uh, leave? Um, in 92. 92. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a while back. Wow. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. back. It just Jeez. goes by very quickly. You got to understand, I was a baby at the time. I think I was maybe five, I mean, you know, nine, something like that. So I wasn't even. Yeah, I was a youngster too. <laughs> I'm remembering when he was at Long Beach State. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Some wow, great see. stories yeah, too. That one. Hey, you guys have a great career. Thanks. Have a good season for the Thank Rebels. Thank you very much. Thanks, and Cap. Be well. Stay Can I call you Cap? Thanks. Is that okay? That's fine with me. Because you are the Cap. People come up to me and call me that all the time. It's oh, okay, okay. Sounds good to me. Thanks, right, Cap. I appreciate it. Thanks. Always. Thanks, Kareem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. One of the okay. legends, everybody. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So it's, it's always an honor, you know, speaking to, you know, a legend and, and, of course, a Hall of Famer and one of the guys, the pioneers of the, the NBA and the basketball game that we love so much. And we, you know, it's just good to, to have his, his input and understand the, the things that he's been through through life that made him the person who he really is. So it's always a great thing to spend some time with one of the greats. There are places here that defy the senses. 
daring you to believe the impossible. There can't be so much sky or so many stars. Even once you see it in person, you may still doubt it's real. Sometimes we wonder ourselves. Plan your unreal Arizona getaway at visitarizona.com. From Kaya. UNLV opening up a 32 to 16 advantage here at the T-Mobile Center. And don't forget, we'll have a little bit of a break between games and then that matchup between the Utah Utes out of the Pac-12. And they'll be taking on Ole Miss, the Rebels, who I think are underrated. They were selected to finish 10th in the SEC despite having four starters back. Well, this is one thing. The Rebels are a really, really tricky team. Um, now, which Rebels? Ole Miss or UNLV? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm, I'm talking about my UNLV running Rebels. They're really <laughs> tricky. But guess what? They look good to me out there. Hey, you know uh, a famous uh, Rice alum? Um, the last person to have his jersey retired was Ricky Pierce. Oh, is that for right? The, for okay. The Bucks. Okay. Yeah, one of the all-time greats at Rice. So, Aiko Adams fending off the pressure. UNLV forcing the issue outside the perimeter on the drive by Robert Martin. We get a foul underneath and free throws coming up for Rice. Well, this is the game that Coach talked about. He wanted to, to play the free throw game, and you know what? This is, this is the only way you get there. You got to be aggressive and get to the middle of the floor and, you know, go up strong. Marin averages eight points per game and one rebound out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and the Tilton School in New Hampshire. Now, Bryce lost, as we mentioned in the open, they lost six players who just transferred when Scott Perra replaced Mike Rhodes. And one of those players is Igor Kolokov, averaging 34 points per game for the well, he had 34 points, I should say, in the opener okay. for the University of Florida. He left Rice, and that was the school record for most points in a debut. As we get a foul underneath, but not very deep. They're missing a guard uh, by the name of Chad Lott, who last year was the sixth man, okay. and Marcus Evans, who went back with Rhodes to VCU. So Mike Rhodes was an assistant under Shaka Smart and then took the rice job got the program up and running mm -hmm. and then went back when the head coaching position came available at vcu wow i think the main thing is now uh, this young rice team um, is finally getting themselves back on track to where they can actually start building um, you know because they're a very young team but they got some nice pieces in you know like i said in the future they can you know put it together very well schooled and another fundamental point that Piero is making at yesterday's shoot around was to try to draw more charges he said UNLV probably will draw more charges than any team we've seen thus far or might see this season in Conference USA mm -hmm. Adams on the drive left-handed layup attempt no it's tapped around and there's McCoy with yet another rebound. 
Outside, that's more right. and one, a potential four-point play. What a great play by Morin. Great job. Of course, it was set up by the senior, Jordan Johnson. He's really, really running this ball club really, really well right now. Hats off to him. Shakir Justin, Shakur Justin has not scored a point, but he has 10 rebounds already. You know what? Sometimes it's, it's, it's not as nice tonight, um, but he's doing the other he things. Hasn't shot, he hasn't had a shot officially. I think he was fouled inside one time, but hasn't taken one shot officially. That's why it's a team game. You know what? Any given night. And if you're a team player, it doesn't matter who puts the ball in the basket. You know what I mean? A four-point play for the running Rebels as they continue to put the pressure on the Rice Owls. Clyburn did a great job in denying Connor Cashaw around a screen. I, fig I figured that uh, the ball pressure would, would, ha would play a big part in this game and uh, to UNLV's success. As Houston comes down with another rebound and pushes up the floor to Morning with a wide open three. Uh, Morning oh. can't get that one to fall. It's a great look though. Push the tempo, get a wide open shot. You can't ask for anything more. Dylan Jones is now in the game. A near steal by Clyburn. He's all over the place. Hands in the passing lanes, playing great extended defense. Chris Clyburn woke up. Oh no, he's def he definitely found his niche. Fade away, Cashaw. No field goals in the last 248 for Rice and the Owls just one out of their last eight field goal attempts and a foul in the lane. It's actually a carrying call. A carry again. Yeah. So for the second straight game, sorry, uh, Jordan Johnson. I just got to tighten it up. Um, you know, you got to see how the referees are actually calling the game. And, you know, tighten up his handle a little bit, which he's fine. He can do a better job of that. The cutter underneath, Robert Martin. <laughs> my man, Justin, with another rebound. Oh, my God. What is that? 12-13 right now. He's got 11. <laughs> I'm gassing it. <laughs> Underneath and the easy the layup for Brandon McCoy, who now leads all scorers with 15. What a block by the big fella. Not in my house. Wait, you called the block before? Good anticipation you know before what, it even guard. left his hands. But I'm a point guard. I see these things before it happens. <laughs> that's the, I told you. I, I see it before it happens. <laughs> Yeah, that secondary defense for ULV. <laughs> Even Chris Clyburn <laughs> headed for cover. Listen, that was an atomic bomb he's just dropped over there in the third or fourth row. <laughs> Five seconds call. Yeah. Great defense by the UNLV. I told you, ball pressure predicates everything. It makes the, the, the offense run smoother, your defense. The guys are having a great time. What more can you ask for, TC? <laughs> More scoring, we like to see scoring. <laughs> we definitely want to see him put the ball in the basket. I'd like to see, you know, for Rice's sake, to start connecting on some of those shots. The lean in and Mooring draws the foul. It's one of those NBA plays where you just jump into the defender. He's doing a great job of shooting the ball, which is creating a lot of pressure and making the defense have to get out. And you give him a little up fake and Guess what? He's going to the line. Not a bad night at the free throw line thus far for UNLV. Five out of seven. I tell you what, they're hitting their free throws tonight, and that's the only thing that you can ask for. They're being very, very aggressive, and they're getting to the line. And Jovan they're playing team ball is, is, is the number one thing. They're sharing the ball. Well, on 15 baskets tonight, 10 assists. That's amazing. That's amazing. That means guys are making the extra pass. Wait, they gave Morin three shots? That's a gift. No, that was a three-point. That was a, that was I a thought he was le leaning in. That's all right. No, nah, that's what they do in the pros, man. All you right. got to learn your craft. Come on now. T, you've been watching a lot of basketball. What's going on, baby? <laughs> Come on now. You know the game. Yeah, but there's no continuation in college basketball. We found that out last week. Well, if you're shooting a three and you get fouled, how many shots do you shoot? <laughs> the basket should have went. <laughs> Cash off. Downhill, Great defense. out of control. Great the defense. They have they, they have Rice playing at an incredible speed, which is speeding the game up. And you know what? That's how they're able to come away with the turnovers. Fifth turnover by the Rice Owls, and the drought continues. Running Rebels on an 11 to nothing run currently. 
Jordan Johnson, who transferred from Milwaukee, where he played for UNLV assistant coach, Rob Jeter, who was the head coach there. Uh -huh. Long three-pointer by Mooring. That's a heat check right there. Well, definitely. Another heat check, I guess. Back-to-back <laughs> <laughs> -back attack. And that's LaCrae. Rebound, he pushes it up. The man is Pace down, Johnson. Cashaw. Here's Johnson into the open court. Nice pass. And down the oh, lane, and goes back. Can't finish. Come on, youngin. You got to <laughs> finish those. What a great pass by Johnson. He had options Jones. on that play. Yeah, Jones underneath with the foul. He had Green in the corner, and he, and he had uh, Beck cutting to the basket. So he, he, he definitely could have picked whichever way he wanted to, you know, go, and that was a great option. And you have to decide really fast. <laughs> very, very game, great read. The speed of the game has to be <laughs> really quick. I, I, I could tell the speed is a little crazy. I've seen how your eyes lit up like they did a little earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson with just uh, one assist. It looks like he had about a dozen. You know what? They're called hockey assists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure are. Speaking but of hockey, <laughs> when are they going to turn the heat on? I know. I'm freezing. So they, they had a hockey game here, the Vegas Golden Knights. This is their home. Uh -huh. First season in the National Hockey League. <laughs> and they put up the court. They turned this around so fast. And by early this morning, they were able to have shoot-arounds and games on this very floor. But the ice Does is underneath the, us. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. So well, the ice is underneath. This is, oh, great steal by Johnson. UNLV great. has numbers. Johnson all the way oh to the rim. God. And one! What a great play. What a great play by the senior. Johnson, when I tell you he's running the team, he's distributing the ball, he's keeping these guys happy. Look at him, man. He's bringing the guys in. That's the sign of a great leader. Johnson having it his way tonight. And... Johnson was second in the nation in assists, averaging eight. A couple of years back, he had to sit down after he transferred from Milwaukee. He was behind Kay Felder, who's a good little point guard who played for Oakland. Understood. Well, this guy Johnson, like I said, man, I, I've seen his determination in the summertime. I've seen his work ethic. I've seen how much time he put in, you understand, this summer. So at the end of the day, this is, this is not a shock for me. It's actually just paying off. And at the end of the day, the other guys just have to match the intensity. Would you have worn those same uniforms? Did you, did you like the new uniforms for you UNLV? You know what a little I'm metallic on the side, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I'm a little stylish, so at the end of the day, whatever color it is, is making me switch up my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter off of the switch, and then underneath the finish for Malik Osborne. Osborne, a freshman who played for Don Bosco Prep coming was, out of Madison, Illinois. That was really, really good for Rice to see the ball go through the basket. Of course, they fall back into the 1-2-2 two, two zone to kind of slow down the Rebels. Now, let me ask you this. So, Marcus, we see everyone wearing those leggings today, right? They're leggings? <laughs> Is yes. that what you call them? Were those yeah. around when you were playing the game off the uh, the miss by Green, Jay Green, the freshman from Australia? You know what? It, it's funny because um, I think that's around the time. We'll get back to your story after the break. Yeah, we're going to need time for that one. Save that one. Yeah, <laughs> I could tell you just yeah, we're starting gonna... to ramp up. Yeah. <laughs> As is UNLV leading by 26. Fans, don't forget the hottest party. In from chaos order through clinical research it's not a mystery it's medicine comprehensive cancer centers of nevada
change suits for the yeah. same game? Switch it up. You know, it's funny. I got all these suits and never had a chance to wear them. <laughs> a double header. Yeah. Yes. Quick change artist. So tell us about leggings. And is there a place in <laughs> basketball history for leggings? So it's funny. Um, you know, the legging things probably started around maybe like 2003, 2004, which, you know, those, that's the year that I was pretty much drafted in. Um, and, of course, the guys that started the leggings was Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, you know, Gilbert Arenas, and guys like that. Um, I'm not sure if these young guys know what the leggings are for, you know, because I look at the UNLV team, and when I tell you, I was wondering if the coaching staff have them on because everyone has them on. But the leggings are really for, um, you know, guys that get injured. Um, you know, more of the older guys uh, that has problems getting loose and things like that. Um, it helps them create the, the heat and the friction or whatever and warm your, your joints and your legs up. So it's actually, it's actually a medical um, situation with the leggings. You mentioned a name in there as uh, Green mm -hmm. with the miss for UNLV, but you mentioned the name of Allen Iverson, who said that you, Marcus Banks, <laughs> you were the best defender he said that he's ever faced in the NBA. Has he told you that to your face? Has he said that to you? Oh my gosh! Uh, of course, you guys know we we play in the, the big three together, so you know it's a lot of trash talking and a lot of back and forth uh, with me and Allen Iverson, and you know we talk about those things a lot. And, you know, of course, it's better now that I'm not playing. Um, so it makes it easier kind of get those props up. Houston with his first bucket of the night to go along with 13 first half rebounds. And we're getting a different look out of UNLV with Jay Green running the point as A.J. LaPrey answers. Green must have had a, a, a great week of work uh, in practice. Um, and, of course, uh, Smith, I think he's in foul trouble, actually. Uh, but it's good minutes from Green. Um, he's doing actually everything he needs to do. Uh, not doing too much. If he got an open shot, he's taking it. And the main thing, he's playing defense. So, And that's what they need from guys that's coming off the bench. Defense first. Justin is fouled inside the restrictive zone. And so Shakur Justin, the National Junior College Player of the Year last year at Hutchinson, JC, getting to the line. You know, I always said this kid, he, he has a body of a grown man. You can almost always tell kids uh, that attend junior college uh, for the simple fact of, you know, they're put through a weight program first and things like that. Um, but you could definitely tell his body is very, very mature for his age. You know, I've asked you before about junior college players, and it takes them typically some time to blend in on the next level. But for Justin, there's a brick taken from outside by Aiko Adams, ill-advised shot. Um, I don't really think it takes a lot of time. Um, like I said, junior college is, it's actually I, I feel that the guys play harder in junior college than they do in division one sometimes. There's Kasha on the drive, fade away from 12, good. Nice looking shot there nice for Connor Cashaw. Really smooth guard, you know, understands the game, know how to get to a spot, don't do anything he can't do. That's a great, nice little pull up in the paint for him. UNLV struggled last year against the zone, but they're definitely well prepared. Cashaw on a one on two. Oh my God, that was great. And he just went around Houston, but blows the land. Missed the button. The other way, here goes McCoy. That's right. Get in there to the big fellow when all fails. The five-star Brandon Great pass McCoy by Adams. Another Miss Bunny. Rice definitely need those layups. Johnson, I think he'll slow it, slow it down and get get uh, the Rebels in the set. First half line for Brandon McCoy, 17 points, seven of seven from the field. Way off the mark for Mooring. Mooring just has to catch and shoot. He's that type of a player. This is the thing. He has to get in a better flow of the game. Um, you know, of course, you come out, you hit your first couple of threes or whatnot. But the game is way is much more than that. What a great block by Juicy. I want him to get and to the what do you think of the, What do you think of that cross, though, by Eko Adams? Oh, no, great, great ball handle. 
But to getting back to more, um, like I said, the game is going pretty solid for him. I think he should get a couple pump fakes, get him a couple one, two, three with dribble pull-ups. Get to the paint, see if you can get to the line. If you're going to be the main scorer, you have to do a lot of different things well. You can't just shoot the three. You understand? You got to put pressure on the defense and get in, get in the lane a little bit. And I think as the season goes on, he will do a better job at that. Aiko Adams, uh, after an ill-advised foul in, uh, in their game, going back to uh, Eastern Kentucky, there was a foul, and uh, Dedrick Boyd goes to the line mm -hmm. three point, from three-point range in final seconds. Uh -huh. He gets fouled outside the arc, makes all three for Eastern Kentucky, and then back the other way quickly, Adams drives just the length of the court. They had five seconds on the clock. He missed the lay-in, and a subsequent tip was off the mark, and they lose that game by one at the buzzer. Mooring cannot make it for UNLV, but it's been all running Rebels here at the end of the first half, 51 to 24. I think it was a great half by the Rebels. Uh, you know, I, I think, like I said, it was a great point guard play by uh, Johnson to control the tempo, um, keep these guys in, in the game and, and, and keep them ahead. Uh, getting a lot of great play by Green off the bench. Uh, Smith got a couple two early fouls. Uh, you know, they're getting great play. Um, I just think now more for they need to slow the ball a little bit and get, you know, some better shots. And I think everything will be fine for these guys coming to We're going to take a break. We're at halftime at the T-Mobile Arena. It's been all UNLV in the first. Summerlin Life, a premium master plan community lifestyle only found in Las Vegas. With Red Rock Canyon for a backyard and downtown Summerlin's fashion, dining, and entertainment at your doorstep. This award-winning, amenity-rich lifestyle has to be lived to be believed. And with dozens of actively selling neighborhoods, there's never been a better time to start living the Summerlin life. Don't miss the Running Rebels on the Strip, presented by Finley Toyota. The action tips with the MGM Resort's main event on November 20th and 22nd at the T-Mobile Arena, featuring UNLV, Rice, Utah, and Old Miss. The Running Rebels invade the MGM Grand Garden for Games versus Oral Roberts on December 5th and Illinois on December 9th, benefiting the coaches versus cancer. Get all four games at one discounted price or each game by itself. Visit RunningRebelsOnTheStrip.com and get your tickets now. Las Vegas is now a hockey town. Don't miss college hockey. At Five of these positions that we are honored to have 
That was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar addressing the crowd here. That was amazing. Great words of wisdom. You know what? For a guy with his stature, number one, like I said, the captain, for him to go through what he's went through in his lifetime and still be here and fighting and kicking and, you know what? It's amazing yeah. for a guy his age and his caliber. What one of the fiercest honor. competitors you'll ever see. Back Absolutely. with more after this. Vegas oh. is now a hockey town. Don't miss college hockey at T-Mobile Arena when the puck drops for the Ice Vegas Invitational on January 5th and 6th. Boston College battles Michigan Tech, and Arizona State faces Northern Michigan in the opening round on Friday night. Tickets are on sale now at T-MobileArena.com. 
It's college hockey action at the Ice Vegas Invitational January 5th and 6th at T-Mobile Arena. Get your tickets now. Succeeding for more than 20 years. Helping the American Cancer Society. And we're fighting this hey, And with you joining the team, we'll we're, really not gonna, we're, we're not going to have time. We're, save more lives. we're going to have to come back on. He's going to come back. Come and play for us. Come and play for us. When that's on, when that's on, we're back. We're back when that goes on. Can we check win? Let me double check, please. Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. At the break from here in Las Vegas, UNLV leading Rice 51 to 24, the largest advantage, 28 points for UNLV. And in that first half, you know, we, we told you that UNLV has four players that average in double figures. Well, two at the break already, led by Brandon McCoy, the five star out of San Diego. And McCoy, 17 on 7 of 7 from the floor, has 6 rebounds. And JoJo Mooring with 12 points. And outside of that, everyone else in single figures. And Marvin Menzies has gone to his bench rather early. And for Coach Menzies, he's even uh, used a reserve, Jay Green, the freshman, um, at the point guard position. And Marcus, you know, in the first half, you could tell that Bryce has talent mm -hmm. and good execution, but they missed a lot of easy shots inside, and I'm sure that that is what Scott Pira is uh, talking to the team about at halftime. Just 33% from the field uh, in that uh, first first half for um, the Rice Owls. Well, you know what? The only thing I can think of is, like I said, these guys are you know college players. And it's the lights. It is the lights because at the end of the day, the only thing it boils down to is finishing plays. And that's where they're, getting, they're having trouble. They're getting all the way to the basket, having wide open shots. And, you know, they're just missing the easy ones that would probably have this thing a little bit more closer if, you know, they were making the easy shots. But, like I said, you can't take the credit away from UNLV. Uh, Johnson's doing a great job at controlling the tempo. He got the big fella involved early. He's getting a lot of easy baskets, um, you know, in B Mac and. You know, he's getting a lot of help. You know, Mooring had a great half. Uh, he played really, really well. I um, want to see him get to the basket a little bit more. But this is a team effort. These guys are coming in, pitching in. You have different leaders every single night. And at the end of the day, that's UNLV basketball. That's exactly what we want to see. And for, for Rice, you know, Connor Kashaw had six points. And uh, LaPrey 
who came off the uh, the bench, A.J. LaCrae, uh, wound up with seven in that first half. And also, Austin Meyer in some foul trouble with three personal fouls in the first half, but uh, not a lot of highlight reel material. And what do you think they discussed in the UNLV locker room? You know what, keep the pressure. You know, you have to keep applying pressure, uh, push the ball, keep the tempo up, of course. Coach is telling these guys, listen, we got a full roster over here. You know what, we're kind of deep this year. We got a nice little bench. And you know what, we all gonna, everyone's gonna share this wealth. So at the end of the day, if the starting five do their job, you gotta understand, that means the, the younger guys on the team can play and things like that. You know what, back in our day, man, we try to get you off the court fast. We gotta run you out of the building. And like I said, this UNLV team, they gotta put their foot on these guys' necks. You don't, you don't show no life. You take no prisoners, right? Yeah. Well, back in my day. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Your day? Well, <laughs> we used to have to call winners. You know. What do you mean? Like, I got next? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's unbelievable. <laughs> So let me ask you, what shoes did you guys play in back in your day? Was Because, I mean, I'm playing in the Jordans. So. The Chuck Taylors uh -huh. and the Keds. But, but it's no ankle support, so, like, uh, what, what's going on? How do you feel now? I mean, I know I'm banged up a little I bit. Play, <laughs> I didn't play very well. Oh, man. We just played on the schoolyard. Oh, okay. Guess what? That's where it starts. That is where it starts. So UNLV already crushed one rim. Now they're shooting in the other direction. Are they going to try to take down the second rim of the night? You know what? Listen, I want them to start the game the same way they started it. They got to start the game the same way they started the first half. You know, applying pressure, pushing the ball. Having fun is the main thing of this basketball game. Just have fun. You get out there and have fun. You smile. You give high fives. You know what? It's contagious. And you know what? It go from one guy to another. And that's what you want to see in your young players. Well, like I said, you seen it all first time. That was enjoyable having Kareem Abdul-Jabbar here with us. Oh, man, that was out of the planet. That's actually my first time sitting down and being able to get the good one-on-one -on -one or, you know, with them. And like I said, that's Cap. You know, you hear the stories. I didn't get a chance to play against them, but, I mean, you can only imagine. How would you get a shot off? Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, I have great respect for the Cap, <laughs> but I'm a point guard. <laughs> There's Cashaw. He's backing up on that uh, short range jumper. And then Adams up top around the Meyer screen. Great rebound by the big fella. Johnson's nice going to pull, pull up. up. Nice with a free throw line jumper. Great pull up, great pace, great poise. Way to, way to hit the shot. Make that nine points now for Jordan Johnson and Excuse one me. assist. Here's Martin. Great ball pressure by UNLV. And in the result, shuffling the feet. We told you about Scott Perra mm -hmm. and his relationship with James Harden. Well, Harden went to the opening game of the season okay. down there at Rice. And then Harden uh, really says that Perra has been his mentor from the ninth grade on. And just about every day and before every game, Scott Perra will text James Harden, Is that right? some motivational quote, or something to try to keep his his spirits up at even keel. You guys in the league go through a lot, right, of ups and downs the entire season. This is the thing, you gotta understand, um, there's no family on the road. I mean, it's just you, it's just basketball, it's just your homework, and you have to do that for 10 months. So, you know, you're in and out of a plane, you know, 10 month span, hotels, it's really, really hard to focus. And a lot of guys get homesick, even in the NBA. Ball fake, and then Johnson lets the three go, and he connects from distance. And so Jordan Johnson now in double figures, as he has 12. Wow. And you need a psychologist on the road with you every day. You know what, it's, it's tough. And like I said, you gotta look at these kids that's doing one year of college and then going to the NBA at 19. I mean, you're, you're forced to, to be in a just a world of. Nice pass, entry nice pass underneath. And McCoy gets hammered and that'll be the fourth foul, I think, on Meyer. Yeah, that'll be number four. 
but they're doing a great job of getting the ball in there. Um, and like I said, with the with the short roster that you know the Rice Rice team has, you know it's good to get those guys in foul trouble. So you're a coach. You have Brandon McCoy on your squad. Uh huh. How many touches would he get in the paint? Would it be pretty much nearly every time down the court when he's on the floor? This is the thing. I'm a point guard, but I believe that in this day and time, the big man has to touch the ball every time down the floor because you got to use him like a quarterback. Think about it. He's the tallest guy in the building. He can see over the defense. He can see behind. He should be the quarterback. But, of course, he's only a freshman. <laughs> catch this guy a couple years from now, you'll be like, you know what? He's the real deal. And we'll catch him in the show a couple <laughs> years from now. Yes, we will. Aiko Adams with Johnson defending, trying to get a post up, and they set a few screens, and then Martin slashes to the hoop and will draw the foul. So Robert Martin goes to the free throw line. Great ball pressure. Um, but if you go off after that steal, as Clyde Orange just did, you got to get it because it puts your defense in so much trouble. It makes everyone start helping from all over the place. And, you know, you don't want that, you know, your solid defense. What about the one-legging look? What you do know you, what? Would you have worn that? This is 2018. You see it all. Do you remember? Give me one time back in the day when you seen a kid wear a mohawk. Like, do True. you know your parents would... <laughs> If they had one, they'd cover it up with a headband. Exactly. But now, guess what? It's the style. It's the rhythm. McCoy with the turnover dribbled the ball off of his foot. And for the running Rebels of UNLV, just the fifth turnover on the night. So they've played a pretty clean game. You know what? They're doing a great job. And, you know, like I said, it starts from the senior uh, controlling the, the, the tempo of the game. Now we know UNLV has not played any top 25 teams yet. Mm -hmm. But the way that they're executing against some of these opponents in the early stages mm -hmm. has to give fans, you know, a glimmer of hope coming off of an 11 win season as outside Harrison drains his second three of the night. Tim Harrison, the sophomore out of San Diego. What a great shot. Way to control yourself and knock down the easy shot as Harris did. Clybarn off the mark. Yeah, he forced that shot. I would love to see the Rebels to get back into their transition game. If they don't have anything, get themselves into a good set. Nice body control underneath for and get the Connor ball down. Cashaw. Get the ball down there to the big fella. Just back and forth action as Mooring makes that basket. He now has 14. And Tim Harrison has pulled McCoy away from the basket. You have to. So he's done a good job there. And then hopefully you have a back cut or you cut somebody underneath and you might have an easy land. That was the reason why they pulled big McCoy from, Brandon McCoy, I'm sorry, from the basket because of the simple fact that if you got the big man away from the basket, that means you can get all the layups. He's the shot blocker. So it's a great strategy by Coach. Yeah, and, and he has to go out and check Tim Harrison, who we Absolutely. know can fill it up from, yep. from long range. That's right, so he, he has to play. Getting a chance to see Smith come back in the game, that should be a good situation, huh? Yes, we do see Anthony Smith returning for Chris Clyburn. Smith uh, did not have a good three minutes in the first half, just 0 for 2 from the field. Well, this basketball game, man, is, is, is completely filled with rhythm. And you have to have a rhythm to come off and hit shots and do things like that. The guys that can hit shots right off the bench, those guys are called specialists. You don't got to heat that gun up at all whatsoever. <laughs> the Rice Owls out of Conference USA, you know, in the NC2A tournament. And now from 25, as Johnson makes good on that three-point attempt. And Jordan Johnson just does the ball fake. The defender doesn't go out oh, to guard nice him. Oh, nice D so by Smith. Fly. Here it is. Let's see what he got. Not. He's got nothing because he get, gets hacked. He banged up. Oh, he no. rolled his ankle. Yeah. That's always bad to see. What a great play on the defensive end. I hope he's all right. I hope he can shake it off. So Anthony Smith shaking up. Uh, back to the Conference USA and their success. In that 14-team conference uh, for the past three years as uh, Smith gets up, yeah, past three years, up. 
the lone representative sure. of the conference, and they've only sent one the last three years. Uh -huh. So Middle Tennessee upsets Minnesota and Michigan State in the tournament in subsequent years. And then UAB over Iowa State in 2015. So every year, this is a conference mm -hmm. that sneaks up on the majors. It will. But um, they, only get, they only get one in the tournament, like the Mountain West for UNLV. Yeah, that was always a problem. Uh, you got to pretty much win your, your conference in order to get a bid to get into the tournament. Um, like I said, this, this team, they're going to be some shockers. You know, only thing I want them to do is just keep winning, you know, take their time, you know, understand what Coach Menzies wanted them to do. And, you know, we'll just have fun out there. And that, w that will take them farther than they know. McCoy is perfect from the field and six out of seven from the free throw line. Get the big fella the ball. He has to touch it. And he has a nice touch. That's the thing that, that amazes me. Like, like he has his upside is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I like the fact that he could get a shot off, and that's important in the league, right? Is being able to create a shot. Harrison, a yeah, third three. That's right. Somebody got to get out there and contest that guy because he looked like he's heating up. So Tim Harrison at 6'8 is doing a really good job off the skip pass and now underneath near finish first miss on the night by McCoy his rebound he misses three shots in the lane and AJ LaPre comes out with it big fella had to do a better job of chinning the ball when he come up on the rebound and guess what those guys will get out of there start clearing some air for him to get that easy put back Harrison off balance on that shot. LaPre, offensive rebound, backing it out. Nice adjustment. We've got a whistle on the court. Let's see what this is about. I think that's going to take us to uh, the media timeout. UNLV leading big over the Rice Owls. Better late than never. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, but to uh, to get back to um, you know Coach Menzies, uh, I just wanted to add that I think he was he's the perfect guy for this job. You understand? Reason being is I don't know if UNLV needs a, a, a really really big name coach. I like I like a coach kind of in the middle. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it takes the pressure off of the players. And it makes it easier uh, for the coach to do his job and also, you know, the players to do their job. And Menzies can coach. Did a great job at New Mexico State. I like the control that Menzies have, you know, over the team. You know, he's, he's a 
He's a I'm player coach. Problem. He's a player coach. And he allowed these kids really to play basketball and do the things and, and really, um, you know, put their attributes out there. And in result, these guys are playing well and they're having fun. And, I mean, that's the, that's the kind of coach that kids want to play for these days. Spent nine years at New Mexico State at Marvin Menzies. Short jump hook by Houston. Houston not having a, a great offensive night, but he's cleaned the glass with 15 rebounds. Wow. To go along with three points. Double dribble by Adams. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about Coach Menzies and substitutions. Okay. So this is his system, okay? His policy is if he yanks you from the game, then he'll determine when you can go back in. And if you come out on your own because you're a little bit tired, then you could dictate when you want to go back in the game. I think it's a great philosophy. Like, why not? I mean, Rice is going to have a four on one break. Great defense by a freshman. Great defense by a freshman. And Amari Anthony with a Smith great is block. back in. Smith for the Rebels contesting that nice. layup attempt. Off the tip in. Won't go down. 16 boards now for Juston. And there's Juicin there on the go. offensive end. There you go. Great slash. Great job. They just need to get Juicin in some pick and rolls. And you know what? Get him rolling to the basket where he can take the ball in rhythm and go up and just put it in. JoJo Mooring mixing it up a little bit with Robert Martin. Said that he got hit in the head. Juicin with another rebound. Gets it to Smith. It's Mooring in the corner. One pump fake dribble. <laughs> oh, nice to the pass. big filler. Ah, we need those. Shekna Dembele. Missing the layup attempt. So Dembele, the 6'11 sophomore from Mali, Africa, had 35 blocks last season. And for some reason, I know he tweaked his ankle, mm -hmm. but for some reason he's not really fitting in. And this might be a good opportunity for him to get a lot of minutes in a blowout and let him kind of find his way. Well, There's going to be a foul in the lane as Connor Cashaw went up. Well, this is the thing. A lot of these kids are, are very, very young. Um, and these kids have time to grow as a basketball player. Of course, we look at them like, you know, in college, like you have four years to do this and that. But you got to understand, these, these guys are not even men yet. You know, they still have to grow into their grown man bodies and, and things like that. So he has a lot of upside. And I think, um, you know, he's just spending summers in the gym and off season or, matter of fact, during the season. You know, get that work in with the coach. You know what I mean? And you, you, you could see, uh, you know, you see these things kind of turn around for these kids of the work that they put in. Well, Rice can't find the basket. Just 27% on 3 of 11 in the second half. Rice fell back into that 2-3 zone, I think it is, and they come up with a steal. Now, that was a, a bullet pass. A bullet pass by Shakur Houston looking for Shekna Dembele under the basket. Off the curl, LaPrey leaning in. That's a difficult shot. Yeah, trying to draw contact. And there's Dembele. Press, press. Amari Hardy, who's a freshman. His dad was here. His dad's here, right, tonight? Yes, his father is here. Really good guy. Well, well raised kid, well mannered. Spin move in the lane. Wide open look for Smith. Nice. He's got it. This is the thing. This is what the young kid have to do. Everything that, that the senior comes off uh, and starts and does, young fella have to come and do the exact same thing. You push the tempo. You get the guys involved. Do the same thing you've been doing, you know, that got you here. Why would you stop now? The story on Amari Hardy getting back to him as LaPrey mm -hmm. makes good on that basket was that Hardy was headed uh, to Oklahoma State to Stillwater, but then Brad Underwood left, mm -hmm. took the job at Illinois, and so Hardy got out of the commitment, and we're glad that he's here. I tell you what, this young kid averaged 30 points in high school, and his ability is out of the planet. You know, of course, this is Division One basketball, and, you know, he might, he might be a deer in headlights right now. But at the end of the day, his ability, his body size, you know, that's a body of an NBA guy. You understand? He's 205, you know, 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I mean, at the end of the day, he's blessed with the ability, the look. All he got to do is spend his time in the gym and, you know, just like anybody else, work pays off. Hard work does. Hey, stay tuned, uh, fans. The second half of the doubleheader will feature 
the Utah Utes against the Ole Miss Rebels. I think two underrated teams mm -hmm. that we're going to hear more from, I think, as the season goes on. Absolutely. A lot of talent will be on the floor. I think it's going to be a really, really fun contest for the Ole, Ole Miss Rebels. That's going to be a very, very interesting game. Naja Hunter. Harrison. Oh, good ball fake. Nice up. Dembele closed rather quickly. You, you might as well. You have, but this is the thing. You might as well take that shot. It's a five-foot shot. You got to take it. I don't think you can get anything better than that at the time. And for the Rice Owls, that's the 11th turnover of the game. UNLV in single digits. And so even though the Rebels are playing a tempo, I'm sure Coach Menzies is pleased that they're not just creating unforced turnovers. Right. Ball fake. Mooring. Passes up the shot. Smith again for three. That's going to be short. Underneath. Nice. It's Beck with the cleanup as Turvel Beck. I love this kid. He's going to be huge for UNLV. Lapray for three. Great shot. Great look. Great contest. Better offense. So 12 points in the game for A.J. Lapray. Lapray has had an injury plagued career as Hardy tees it up. Lepre, he's had a chronic hip injury. Again, uh, and that's a switch. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't want to get this guy heated up. He can really, really shoot the ball. I think he's already there. He's got 15. He's got 15, and he's three out of four from distance. You so, see the big fella in uh, Claiborne got to come back. We have to get some defensive presence out here. Weak side rebound for Naja Hunter. What a great push by Hunter. Great hesitation, good kick out. And Harrison with Mooring closing. Can't get it to drop. Lepre, that's his spot. 25 footer. Oh, he short armed it. I think he heard me. Yeah, he definitely heard you. Lob on the alley oop. Come on. Smith couldn't hang okay. on. Here's Hunter back the other way. Length of the court, switches nice. hands up with the left hand for two. Nice decision Hunter. with the three on one break. The right Owls are making a little run. Come on now. Keep those viewers interested. That's right. Bounce pass down the lane. Nice young fella. And that gave Good it off. Cut. Good and cut. the basket by Amari Hardy. That's a great cut by the young fella. That's what I think he needs to do. You know, if his jump shot's not falling, get in, get some easy layups. And as a freshman, you're not expected, you know, that much. So it's always good, whatever's at it. UNLV will go 11 deep this season, barring any injuries. And so we'll see McCoy and Clyburn and Johnson, the point guard, when we return here from the T-Mobile Arena. I know it's old fashioned, but I don't have a cell phone. So when my landline cut out, we just felt so isolated. The power was down on the entire block. It was a Saturday, so the kids were home. Hey. I wouldn't say that I'm addicted, but when I lost my cable and internet, I was paralyzed. You have no idea what they put me through. And all because my neighbors didn't call 811. Did they, honey? For more information, visit www.call811.com. <laughs> oh no, not again. There are places here that defy the senses, daring you to believe the impossible. There can't be so much sky or so many stars. Even once you see it in person, you may still doubt it's real. Sometimes we wonder ourselves. Plan your unreal Arizona getaway at visitarizona.com. From chaos, order, through clinical research. It's not a mystery, it's medicine. Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. Pasco and Marcus Banks here from Vegas, and I was just looking at the stats. I mean, it's incredible. You know, you talk about team basketball, but you need to get the buy-in of the team. 
Absolutely. And so many times we hear coaches preach that they want to play team basketball, and then they just fall short because they don't have the buy-in from the players. Tonight, UNLV, 26 baskets, 17 assists. That's unheard of. This is the thing. That's exactly what Coach Menzies needed. And you know what? Like I said before, it starts from the point guard play. By Johnson coming out, being aggressive, getting into the basket, you know, creating shots for those guys. Look look at the results. Look what it, look what it does. He's five doing assists, a great job. Five assists for JoJo Mooring. Five assists for Shakur Justin in the game. Man, every night you have different heroes. That's right. That's what it's called. It's team basketball. Try to pack the zone in again, and that pass is Eridus Hardy. Threw it over the head of Jordan Johnson, and we have a timeout on the court. This is the thing. Amari has to, as a, as a young guard coming into the league, you know, what I want to see more of him do is actually getting the teeth of the defense. You know what? He's not shooting the ball great, but that doesn't mean that he's not a great basketball player, a good basketball player. Get in the teeth, cause havoc. Like I said before, do the things that you've done to get here. And you know what? The game will be easy. Maybe 20, 30 years ago, you'd have probably been good at that move. When I was wearing my kids. <laughs> oh, kids. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Again, be sure to join us Wednesday, November 22nd. That's this Wednesday. Elgin Resorts main event, official after party, like Night Club. I think you're right, though. For this Utah team, I think it's going to be good for them to get down and get a couple games here. Of course, to see the Rebels early you know, in the season, it, it, and this always doesn't hurt, you know what I mean? So, I think it's good to see those guys. So. If you're watching at home, you know, attendance has been not very good, to be honest with you, at the Thomas and Mack Center, despite a quick start. Back cut, the layup for two, and one as Robert Martin got underneath the basket. Yeah, right there, I think it was back on the, the bottom side that, that kind of fell asleep. And, you know, this guy got a backdoor cut, and, you know, they would get the end one on the play. What's it going to take to regain fan interest in this program? Because this is a city that's predicated on winners. We're seeing that right now with the Vegas Golden Knights, the hockey team, the NHL expansion team, that's doing very uh -huh. well in this building. This is the thing. Uh, as far as the Rebels, it's always been kind of a, a attendance in. situation. But like I said, I, I think we have to start from the bottom and – you know, we have to get to some of these high schools and, you know, get some tickets to some of these kids and, you know, throw some UNLV gear on them and, you know, let them, let them cheer. And we got to start there. Dylan Jones, the transfer from Penn. Wide open three again for Johnson. Late nice arriving catch. one and then Terrell back with a stick back for two. That was a great play by Beck. And you know what? He's been down there uh, causing havoc around the rim all night long. Rebels are just That's still continuing to play very hard. Great ball. Great ball pressure by Johnson. He gets the ball. He pushes it. This should be exciting. Nice. In the legs. The trailer climb. That's what I'm talking about. Clyburn with a great layup. I told you. Johnson is pushing the tempo. He's controlling these guys. He's putting them where they need to be. He's doing an unbelievable job of running the team. Hats off to Jordan Johnson. UNLV about to run the Owls out of the building. Rebels averaging 99 points per game, and they'll be there shortly at this pace. 
Absolutely. What what do we get here, man? They got some free hot dogs and you get a hundred or what is it, pretzels or something? Is it popcorn or something? What are we going to do? The half court shot? Can me and you do anything? I'm You're always you looking for the handout, partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The time honored tradition in the NBA of like rookies <laughs> carrying your bags. Well, Marcus tried to pull that on me. I was like, hey. No, it's, it's, no, no, no. I was helping you actually carry you into the <laughs> arena. So, so tell the viewers. <laughs> uh, you had four surgeries at yes, once? Yes, okay, I did. Okay, so what, what happened? You just fell apart. You know what? Um, after 15 years of basketball, um, you know, just the, just the wear and tear on the body, um, you know, just running a lot, planning, jumping, and things like that. So, you know, just, just went and got a couple things cleaned up. Got a big season coming up soon here at the Big Three. You playing for the Ghost Ballers again? You know what? Hopefully, we'll see. You know, they're, shake, they're definitely shaking things up. Well, they're banging bodies, and then the finish underneath, and that was Naja Hunter. Back with another rebound. Traveling by the fellow. Yeah, and McCoy's like, I don't think, I didn't even see him move his feet. So. I didn't really either, but hey, that's why we are sitting according to referees or into the basket, so you got to let them do their job, right? That was the ghost caller. <laughs> ghost that callers. Call. That was a nice one. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I still want some ghost baller gear. No worries. So how much do you work around Ice Cube? Do you see him much? You know what? Um, during the season, you know, of course, you see him every single day. Uh, a little bit more. You got to think that Ice Cube has movies and all kind of things going at this point in time. So he's definitely got a trucking companies all around the world. And uh -huh. Did you get him your script you know, yet? Have you done that? You know what? No, I actually, I haven't got him my script yet, but... He has, told, he has told me that, you know, he, he might put me in some, some things. So we're looking forward to it, man. Here's Hunter in the open court. We can start that Hollywood out here in Las Vegas. What you think? On the baseline. Let's see this move. Hunter. Nice. Nice pivot. He uses it very, very well. It's the only way. He went against the flow there with a quick stop. And Naja Hunter puts it in over Brandon McCoy. That zone slows down the Rebels. Get in there to the big fella. That's all we need. Throws it up with the left hand and can't get it to drop. You know, McCoy's had a very busy past few months underneath. Cleaning it up was Osborne off the miss. Who threw that up from the outside? I was just saying that was a pass. Yeah, yeah, that was a pass. That's what point guards do all the time. <laughs> Throw up on here. That might have been a little short, but we're gonna give him the assist on that one. The nagging zone of the Owls. Off the double team. Let's see what McCoy can do. Shot clock is down to six. In the spin cycle goes ah. Jordan. Jordan Johnson. Big fella, big handed. They got bumped from behind by Osborne. And so Brandon McCoy goes back to the charity strike. Well, he's been solid from the strike, so I'll take him there. McCoy, seven out of eight from the free throw line. Yeah. Registers his fourth double-double on the season with 21 and 10. We've got a timeout on the court. Looks like it's going to be a regular thing for McCoy in these double-doubles, right? Sure will be. There's life, and then there's some...
So, Marcus, what does Brandon McCoy have to do to improve his game for the next level? Um, he has to stay in the lab. Uh, we definitely need him to work on that left and right jump hook for sure. Um, he has great touch, great feel for the game. Um, get in a little bit better shape, of course. Yeah, he had a very busy summer because Brandon McCoy played for the U.S. under-18 national team in Egypt. Okay. And he had me up at all odd hours trying to watch his game. <laughs> and Andre Lafleur, the assistant coach from UNLV, went over to Egypt too. Okay. One of the funnier sights was John Calipari was on a camel. See, they all went out camel riding. Yeah, why not? I mean, that's a, that's a great area. I mean, I lived over there. I played in uh, you Lebanon did? and Qatar and, you know, Dubai. And, you know, Egypt's right next door. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's not unheard of to see someone walking down the street with a camel. <laughs> you know what I mean? But actually, you know what? Not in Las Vegas. This is the thing. What people don't understand, those camels... Um, are really expensive. You know, like if you look at the people over here in the States, you know, we ride around in Rolls Royce and, you know, stuff like a, a, a camel mm -hmm. is a Rolls Royce for those guys. Yes, a camel is cost at least like two, three hundred thousand dollars too as well. Seriously? Seriously. Do they Seriously. Have, do they have Uber camels? I mean, you know, to kind of take around town or how does that work? I, I, you know, I don't know. I think it, it's like pretty much the same thing as the, you know, the horses where you get the thoroughbreds and stuff like that. And I mean, it's the same thing. You have a good camel. I mean, camels Cash don't on. drink water for like three months and, and can last. And draining the outside jumper for three is Aiko Adams. Nice feed from Connor Cashaw. And one of the downsides for the Rice Owls is that they only have nine players that they could use right now. But as you can tell, fatigue has played a big, uh, you know, part in this game uh -huh. um, because they only have nine guys. And at the end of the day, I thought I would see more of that zone. But you know what? Zone is actually harder to play than uh, man to man. Is, and people don't realize that. Kasha had it stripped away. Gathered by Bishop Mency. We have Marvin Menzies and we have Bishop Mency. Mency. Shot clock winding down to five. The prey going baseline, and he double dribbles. So the turnover to UNLV will be the 13th for the Rice Owls. My coach, I always had a coach by the name of Doc Rivers that told me you always want to keep that turnover number under maybe like not 12. I want to say 12. Mm -hmm. um, if you can keep that number down pretty low, you can have a pretty successful game. And you know, with five minutes left to go in the, the half, you know these guys already reached that limit. Um, the law pass way over the head of Dembele, who felt as though he was almost undercut by Connor Cashaw. Just got to do a better job of protecting the ball. Both teams right now getting a little sloppy, but of course, fatigue is setting in. Out of the court for UNLV, Mbake Jong. Nice pull up for the young fella. Aiko Adams now with a hot hand, as he has seven. They just seem to score the Rice Owls mm -hmm. in bunches, so a couple of baskets for players back and forth. Now they just need to find some consistency. Mm -hmm. They play awfully hard. And yes, they do. the one message that Scott Paris sent to his team was that winning at this level is really hard. A three-pointer, and that was Jordan Johnson. Johnson now with 18. He's playing an unbelievable game. I want him to do a little better, better job on the turnovers. But other than that, this is a this is almost a perfect game for a point guard. Harrison over the big body and Shekna Dembele. Now here's Jordan Johnson down the lane. Kick out for three. Hardy on the way. Air ball. The young fella got a pump. One dribble pull up. Get to the basket. You got to see the ball get to. You got to see the ball go through a couple times. And, and at the end of the day, he's a, he's a freshman. And, and we understand he's going to make mistakes. But as long as you're making him at a high level, you know what? I think he'll be fine. Take some of the pressure off himself, you know? The game is out of reach. And fans that are here want to see UNLV hit 100, and they're just waiting on that. The running Rebels up by 25.
There's life, and then there's Summerlin Life, a premium master plan community lifestyle only found in Las Vegas. With Red Rock Canyon for a backyard and downtown Summerlin's fashion, dining, and entertainment at your doorstep, this award-winning amenity-rich lifestyle has to be lived to be believed. And with dozens of actively selling neighborhoods, there's never been a better time to start living the Summerlin life. Don't miss the Running Rebels on the Strip presented by Finley Toyota. The action tips with the MGM Resort's main event on November 20th and 22nd at the T-Mobile Arena featuring UNLV, Rice, Utah, and Old Miss. The Running Rebels invade the MGM Grand Garden for games versus Oral Roberts on December 5th and Illinois on December 9th, benefiting the coaches versus cancer. Get all four games at one discounted price or each game by itself. Visit RunningRebelsOnTheStrip.com and get your tickets now. Fans, neon hoops on the floor, on the baseline, everywhere you look around the T-Mobile. And MGM Resorts has branded all things basketball here in Las Vegas with the neon hoops banner. Yes, Vegas has definitely become the capital of basketball at all levels. So MGM Resorts just purchased a brand new WNBA franchise, which will play at Mandalay Bay. NBA Summer League comes through town. Thousands of prep teams come to Vegas each July for summer recruiting events, USA Basketball, training camp, the Big Three Championship. Yes, it is. This past summer, Las Vegas three-on-three -three weekend, NBA preseason games, on and on and on. Also, the Play for K Women's Tournament later this week at Mandalay Bay. So if you're following along, you could hashtag Neon Hoops and become part of the conversation. Well, they do a great job, and how soon before we see a, uh, an NBA <laughs> team here in Vegas? Hopefully, um, i say by 2021, I would love to see that. Probably like five years, I think, I think they're ready. Like this, I think the arena, them building the arena is a good, a good start, uh, you know, for an NBA team. Vegas is ready. Ball fake by Mooring. The return to Green, starts his drive, and he gets fouled. I went to the groundbreaking mm -hmm. for the new Raiders Stadium, which Thanks UNLV. For Thanks UNLV, for the call. Thanks yeah, yeah. for the call. UNLV football. Weren't you celebrating your birthday? Wasn't it birthday week or month? Or? Oh, that's the reason you're just now telling me today, and my birthday was like two days ago. Like, that's, that's you know, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. But it was a lot of fun, and that's going to be spectacular. They're going to have, they'll have a Final Four there someday. Mm. Yeah, that will be great. Rebels looking to crack that zone. They need to move away from the ball. You gotta Shot get clock printed. at four. Here's Hardy. He sees the clock. He'll let it fly. Rainbow three is good. Nice. See, the difference when you play, like that shot there was like rushed and under pressure. You will hit a shot like that before you hit the wide open, get your feet locked. Open shot. Osborne had the ball just roll around the rim. Let's go, young fella. Push. Here's Hardy. Nice. Drives high off class for two. What a great move by Amari. So Amari Hardy now with seven points off the bench. That's great. He's played 21 minutes, and these are just all valuable repetitions. Yes. Yes, it is. There's only one way just you can learn. Just a freshman, right? Yeah. yeah. If I'm a player on Rice, this is fun times because you get to play an entire game if you're no, a Connor Cashaw. This is the time when you make a name for yourself in games like this. You continue to play hard. And yeah, sure absolutely. The coaches appreciate that. Nice by Justin. The finger roll, Shakur Houston. Justin now with eight points, 19 rebounds. So I think they just want to get him in double figures and then take yeah. him off the court. Absolutely. Why not? Right. 
you look at the scoring column for UNLV, Brandon McCoy, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 18 points in the game for Jordan Johnson. And uh, Johnson in the contest also with three assists. I mean, as you can tell, it's, it's, it's just a great team after the great team win if these guys, um, you know, finish this game out. And, you know, it, it's always good to get that, that win in that W column. So UNLV will have the day off tomorrow, as will Rice. And then back in action here on Wednesday night. Another twin bill. Top here's Martin. Martin backing down. Beck and throws it up and in. That's a great play by Martin. Great Martin, patience. You know, he's just a sophomore. He's pretty gritty. Travell Beck, Hardy, Green, the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's Hardy, shot clock. Is this the freshman crew out there on the floor right now? You look like it, right? Green, they're going to have to chuck it up, but three seconds, two, one, way off the mark. That's a shot clock violation. Teaching moment for Marvin Menzies no, right there, huh? For all of the guys on the floor, I think all these guys are freshmen, and this is the thing. It's going to be led by the point guard. So if you can get him to buy into the system first, which is Hardy, the young fella, uh -huh. guess what? This is his group. All the rest of the guys fall right into place. Miles Lester. Great ball pressure. That's Martin. Martin in traffic throws it up. The battle underneath, and Malik Osborne gets the rebound here's martin for three oh. he's got it what a great play right off the pick and roll great poise it's his turn yes. to score punches. <laughs> that's right let's get your numbers <laughs> <laughs> look at the basket big fella from three-point range we saw where Turvel back passed up the shot but then takes it to the rim and lays it in 95 to 68. Well, if it's any consolation, it looks as though Rice is going to hold UNLV under its scoring average. The drive inside by Naja Hunter. Hardy's just going to run out the clock. And UNLV prevails 95 to 68. Great team, great team win by the UNLV Rebels, running Rebels. They look really, really good. Got a chance to get out in the open floor. And as a result, come away with the victory. 21 assists on 34 baskets. I mean, I can't really talk about that enough, the way that this running Rebel team has shared the ball now 4-0 on the season. This is the thing. Sharing the ball is so contagious. Just ask the Golden State Warriors. And like I said, every team in America would love to play like this guy. Las Vegas is now a hockey town. Don't miss college hockey at T-Mobile Arena when the puck drops for the Ice Vegas Invitational on January 5th and 6th. Boston College battles Michigan Tech. And Arizona State faces Northern Michigan in the opening round on Friday night. Tickets are on sale now at T-MobileArena.com. It's college hockey action at the Ice Vegas Invitational January 5th and 6th at T-Mobile Arena. Get your tickets now. There are places here that defy the senses, daring you to believe the impossible. There can't be so much sky or so many stars. Even once you see it in person, you may still doubt it's real. Sometimes we wonder ourselves. Plan your unreal Arizona getaway at visitarizona.com. From chaos, order, through clinical research. It's not a mystery, it's medicine. Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada.
there's life, and then there's Summerlin Life, a premium master plan community lifestyle only found in Las Vegas. With Red Rock Canyon for a backyard and downtown Summerlin's fashion, dining, and entertainment at your doorstep, this award-winning amenity-rich lifestyle has to be lived to be believed. And with dozens of actively selling neighborhoods, there's never been a better time to start living the Summerlin life. Don't miss the Running Rebels on the Strip presented by Finley Toyota. The action tips with the MGM Resort's main event on November 20th and 22nd at the T-Mobile Arena featuring UNLV, Rice, Utah, and Old Miss. The Running Rebels invade the MGM Grand Garden for games versus Oral Roberts on December 5th and Illinois on December 9th, benefiting the coaches versus cancer. Get all four games at one discounted price or each game by itself. Visit RunningRebelsOnTheStrip.com and get your tickets now. Las Vegas is now a hockey town. Don't miss college hockey at T-Mobile Arena when the puck drops for the Ice Vegas Invitational on January 5th and 6th. Boston College battles Michigan Tech and Arizona State faces Northern Michigan in the opening round on Friday night. Tickets are on sale now at T-MobileArena.com. It's college hockey action at the Ice Vegas Invitational January 5th and 6th at T-Mobile Arena. Get your tickets now.